Okay, today is the day my box came. Why am I holding this so weird? I don't know. <laughs> this has been a long journey of me redoing and making over this room and moving things around. It's so beautiful, I could cry. Let's do this. Oh, hi there. Thank you for joining me again for another DIY diary episode. If you know what these episodes are because you've seen them before, but somehow haven't subscribed, now would be the perfect time to do so <laughs> because I enjoy having you around. These are really fun. So today's is gonna be a really, really, really exciting one. So if you haven't seen the last DIY Diary episode, we made over this IKEA media unit. We gave it these really funky cane drawer front covers. It's actually pretty easy to do and it was like an amazing 180 transformation for this guy. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that then come back for today's episode. So the first thing we're gonna be tackling in this video actually harkens back to a video I did at the beginning of this whole work from home time. And I was doing a mini makeover on my guest bedroom slash giant walk-in closet upstairs. And I mentioned I had an Ikea sofa that I didn't love the cover of. But I also said that at that time I wasn't ready to commit to buying a sofa cover. And that's when I got the most exciting email from ComfortWorks saying they wanted to help me out with my Ikea sofa. If you don't know what ComfortWorks is, they make replacement covers for a whole range of furniture from different stores, a lot of Ikea stuff, couches, chairs, footstools, you name it, they probably have a cover that fits an item you already own. Another reason that I really love ComfortWorks is because they truly are about sustainability in the fact that it's so much better to just replace the cover on your sofa and give it a whole new fresh life than it is to just toss your sofa into the landfill and buy a new one, which is super wasteful. And trust me when I say that simply giving a new cover to an existing piece of furniture can truly make it feel like a whole new piece of furniture. It really does. I've done it to my sofa downstairs, so I'm super excited to do it to the sofa I have upstairs. Two little quick points I'm gonna throw in about ComfortWorks while I have you is that they don't use any plastic to ship their stuff in, and all of the scrap fabric they have goes towards the samples that they send you, so they're not using new fabric to make those. We love, we stand. Okay, so I'm gonna go and select a bunch of samples from the ComfortWorks website of things I might wanna try out. Of course you wanna do samples so you can see and touch it and feel it before you order the real thing. And once those get here, I'm gonna unbox the samples and we're gonna look at them together and make a decision. All right, you guys, very exciting day for me today. My samples from ComfortWorks came in the mail and I have not opened them yet because I wanted to do them on camera with you. And can I just say, it comes in the cutest packaging ever. It's like this like old school manila envelope. I love it, it's so cute. So let me open this up and see what they look like in real life. I'm excited because it's so hard to tell online, so samples are the best. Ooh. I like this already, okay, this is exciting. So, we have the natural linen, which I knew I would love. It's the safe choice, it's so nice. This is the Madison Rose Cotton, which is like this really nice dusty pink. And as you can tell, this wall is kind of that color. So I feel like that's nice together. This is Madison Sand, which is the same as the other one, just in a beigey color, which again, also, I very much like. This is gonna be so difficult. <laughs> This is Kino Natural, which is nice. It's a bit of a thicker weave. This is Kino Oatmeal, which is also that thicker weave, um, but in more of like a beigey brown color. And this one, I was really excited to see in real life. This is their Savannah Saddle. It's their vegan leather, and sometimes faux leather, vegan leather feet can feel very like vinyl-y, but this does not. This feels very convincing, which I quite like. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm gonna put them all kind of on the back here and we can kind of decide I don't know how I'm gonna decide. Like, I like all of these. Any of these would be wonderful. <laughs> I was so sure that I thought I would want to do this one, the vegan leather. I feel like the sandy sort of tones of this room want something a little softer. The white, I think, is too safe. I want to do something a little more interesting. Now we're down to the beiges and the pinks. Oh, I like the pink, but I don't know if I'm gonna like it forever. And when you purchase one of these, you want to have them for a long time. Uh, I think I'm going to say no to the pink, but it's so nice. Tell me in the comments which one's your fave, even though it will be too late because I will have picked one. But I'm curious anyways. <laughs> okay, I think this one feels too dark. Oh, I'm going to put all my pillows back on because I'll probably style it with those pillows too. A or B or A. I think I'm going to do the linen. I think I'm going to do the linen. It's what my gut tells me that I love linen, it's so beautiful and natural, and the color of this is like a really nice sandy warm color. 
it's not white, big steps for me, <laughs> but it's such a warm tone. Okay, I think I'm gonna commit and place my order for this and then I will see you guys when my package arrives. Okay, today is the day my Comfort Works box came and I have not opened it, even though I've been so tempted to because I've been saving it to do it with you guys. Don't throw scissors. Okay, before I open this, quick little refresher on what it looked like. I know it's behind me, but let me give you the whole shabam fancy shots. As you can see, it's a very cool toned white, if not gray, and I was not a fan of the texture of it. It's not very soft, so hoping to solve all of that with this. Oh, take a look at the legs as well. Hopefully there's a little surprise in here to help with that. We're gonna find out in two seconds. In my original video, I also took off the big back cushions and put my other cushions on because I was just trying to eliminate that gray color as much as possible, but I threw them back on because I think we might want them back now that I have a different color. Okay, you guys know I was a big fan of their packaging when I got the samples that just came in that little envelope, but I, I'm still a fan. Look how cute this is, and it's tied up like a little Christmas present. This feels like Christmas even though it's not close to Christmas at all. Yes. I made, I made a good choice. <laughs> this is such a beautiful beigey linen and it's so soft and so luxurious feeling. I cannot wait to get it on this couch. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Right? It's better already. It's so, so, so exciting. What else do we have? <gasps> I feel something else. <laughs> They also sell furniture legs, replacement furniture legs on their website, and I spotted these and thought they would really elevate the feel of this couch because it came with the silver metal, but the whole vibe of this room is not very silver. They have these legs that are like a bleached light wood. It's almost white, but you can still see the wood texture. It's basically whitewash, and I am so excited to replace the legs that I have with these. I think this is really going to help to make a huge difference. Okay, the bag is now empty, so I think all that's left to do now is to replace the existing cover and the existing legs with the new ComfortWorks cover and legs and see how good she looks. Let's, let's do this. Okay, so the new cover is on and as you can see, I was able to get it on all by myself. It was a really easy process and I'm so happy with how the result turned out. It's so soft and I didn't expect to love this beige color so much. It feels very right for this room and especially having the pillows on now. I think before the issue was I was trying to make these very beigey creamy pillows fit on the super stark white couch and it was just looking wrong and I couldn't figure out why but now seeing them against a beige couch they just feel like they came with the couch honestly even though they didn't so thank you again to ComfortWorks for sending me this cover. If you want to give your couch or your chair or your ottoman like literally a new life and give your whole room a new feel. I'm gonna link them below so you can check it out. I, I feel like I need to show you the whole room completed because this has been a long journey of me redoing and making over this room and moving things around um, and I feel like I finally can breathe and it feels right and finished and done now having the couch just match the rest of the space. So this is how it looks. I am absolutely in love with it. This super stellar lampshade, I actually DIY'd all by myself, so I'm gonna link that video for you below if you wanna see how it was done. And if you're wondering where anything else is from, like these pillows, this lamp, check the description below. I will do my best to link what I can. All right, so that is the end of this project, but you know I have more, so on to the next one. Okay, next up, we are gonna tackle this giant window in my living room. <laughs> it's a bay window in that it juts out a little bit and it has a little bit of a ledge, not enough to be a Sitted, sitted ledge. Not enough to be a seating ledge. Not enough to be a window seat. <laughs> Not enough that you can sit by the window, but enough that you can put things on it like plants. I have done that so far and they just love it, which is great. Um, but the one thing about this window is it is framed entirely in a very dark wood, which I think is just bringing down the mood of this window where you want it to feel bright and light and airy and not so heavy with this wooden trim. And another tip I have for you and something that I strongly believe in is having a cohesive theme and color vibe throughout your whole home. It's a good way to make your home just feel put together. So I've slowly throughout all my 
my room transformations, been implementing this very warm tone, creamy, light to mid-tone woods throughout my home, and I think this window needs an update to reflect that as well. The other ish with this window is that it is so big and beautiful that if you're sitting here in the morning on a weekend trying to watch TV, the reflection on the TV is just wild. So I think adding some curtains to this will A, just make it look beautiful, and B, really help us to control the light. So let's get started. Okay, so I don't know if you guys could tell, it's pretty obvious that the top of the ledge below the window is in pretty rough shape. The wood is like missing all of the stain, it's bumpy and uneven. So I feel like the best solve here is to just get a nice piece of wood to place on top and make a whole new ledge altogether. There is this place that my sister and her fiance actually have been raving about and told me to go for the longest time. They build furniture on occasion too, and it's called Exotic Woods. They said they have the best woods. So we're gonna go there today and see if I can get a really cool piece of wood whether it be live edge or not, I haven't decided yet to make a new top for the window shelf altogether. Something like this would be really nice, but I don't need it to be this of a red wood. I also have no idea what kukar wood is. <laughs> Look how nice this is for like a little coffee table. Don't need one obviously, but it's so beautiful. That one too. Wow. I think we're gonna go with the one at the very back. You can't quite see it, but it's looking good. All right, it's a pretty slow morning here. So I think we're gonna listen to some Bon Iver while we paint. Now that everything's been cleared out, I feel like you can really see the damage that's been done to this wood over time. Okay, it probably needs another coat of paint, but look how much brighter it looks in here already. This is like so, so good. Okay, so now let's work on cutting that piece of wood that's gonna go here. As you notice, I didn't paint all of this because it doesn't matter because we're gonna cover it with that wood I bought yesterday. So I'm gonna use this craft paper to draw out a template of exactly what this shape is so that I know I get the measurements 100% right on the wood because I don't wanna mess this cut up at all. Some areas where I maybe have cut it like a little too short, see how there's a bit of a sliver there? I'm just gonna use tape to build it back up instead of cutting a whole new sheet. See, and now that corner is slightly more filled out than my paper template would have been. Do you see how not fun it would have been to go in with a measuring tape and get like this, ooh, hello, to measure out this angle? and this tiny little angle and all these little angles. That would have been no fun. So instead I just use tape, tape it all out, get exactly in there. And then when I peel it away, I'll have the perfect template. Okay, so this is the piece of live edge I ended up getting. It's Elm and it was $200 if you're curious which I know sounds a lot, but actually this one was on final sale because it has a pretty big crack in it. And the full size pieces that were not cracked were like double the price, so. As much as I wanted this to be nice, I still keep myself on a little bit of a budget so I don't go crazy. Um, and I think we're gonna find a way to just make this crack work, okay? We love it. So, I'm gonna take that template that I drew inside and place it on and get it all placed nice and groovy and trace it out.
I finally have the shape all cut out to fit nicely in the bay window and I sanded it down and it's looking really good. So the last step before installing it is just to give it a nice clear coat to protect it. This is my favorite one ever. It's the Verithane Blue Can Clear Finish Gloss. I just, I don't know, this one never yellows. It's never let me down. I've tried other ones and this is always the best one. So we are gonna give it a couple coats, sand it between, show you right. Okay, got about five-ish layers of the clear coat on this. It's fully dry, so now we're gonna put it in and pray that it fits. Should I have tested that before doing all this? Yes, but... <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about curtains and what we're gonna do. So what happened is it had curtains and I didn't put them up properly because I was kind of in a rush to get them up to provide shade for said TV problem we talked about already. I wanna share with you my new current design obsession is curtains that go literally to the ceiling. They hang from the ceiling instead of on a rod. Rods are out, but this is a new thing I love so much. I think it makes spaces look really chic expensive to have a curtain that's literally from the ceiling so you can buy these rails that literally screw into the roof and then there's a little track with little beaded clips and the curtains hang from the ceiling so they're not on a rod you don't see a rod and they slide really nicely actually along these tracks so I put the track up and realized that you need the kind of curtains that have that piece on the back where you can put the little hooks into. The curtains I bought for that window did not have that. They are like these little pocket things which are meant to go on a standard rail. So my quick hack at the time was to take the little clips you need for the rail and just like, yeah, this is how I did it. I just like poked it through and like it sagged like this. Like it, it was a hot mess. It was no good. So I'm gonna take these off. And what you need to do to fix that is you need to have a strip that looks something like this. This is the piece that you can put the clips on. It has all these little kind of threaded bits where you can put hooks in wherever you want, wherever you need them to go. So if you saw my bedroom makeover, and if you haven't, I'm gonna link it because you should go see it. It was a good time. Um, I ended up taking this strip off of the curtains that I hung, and I'm actually gonna use them and put them on the new curtains so we can put them on the hooks to the ceiling rail and do it properly and make it look so I'm gonna take this and sew it onto the top of the new curtain so that we can actually put it onto the clips in the rail properly. It's gonna look beautiful and gorgeous. Let's do that. So the semi-frustrating thing is that I don't think I can really use a sewing machine to put this on because where I need this strip to align on the back of the curtain is not where there already is some stitching. And I don't wanna to create two more lines on the front because I think it's just gonna make the curtain look a little messy. So what I'm gonna do is just hand stitch because it's a double layer curtain, just hand stitch through the back layer and you won't see it. It's a little bit tedious, but overall I think in the end it's gonna look a lot better. So I'm taking this strip and I'm just gonna hand stitch it along the back top of the curtain. Yes, I was delivered a handmade pizza partway through this, and is it risky to eat a very saucy pizza over white curtains? Absolutely, but I like to live on the wild side sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I've got the trim up, and I put all the little clips in, spaced out accordingly, and all that's left to do is hang them and see how they look. Well, let's go. <laughs> oh, hello, visitor. All right, so the curtains are up, the plants are now back in place. Are you guys ready to see how this looks? I'm literally staring at it right now. It's so beautiful, I could cry. Hold on, let's roll the clips of how it looked before just so you really remember, and let's take a look at how it looks now. I am so impressed with how this live edge windowsill replacement came out. I love the fact that we were able to custom cut it to make it fit perfectly into the space of the window. It totally looks like it was meant to be there, and it's a Definitely a 180 from that awful, awful wood that was underneath it before. <laughs> Painting the frame of the window white obviously did wonders for making it feel bright and airy and open and honestly made it feel like a whole new window. And of course, I'm a huge fan of the curtains that we hung. Not only are they functional when we wanna stop light from hitting the TV, they also look great and they make the space feel tall and big and beautiful. Thanks so much guys for hanging out with me for another episode of my DIY Diaries. There are two others in this mini series, so go check those out after this one if you wanna see me DIY more things around my house. And I'm sure there'll be more to come in the future, so make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on them. Thanks for joining me today, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.